Sukuna Kaisen continues with every sorcerer running the gauntlet just to die. Kusakabe is the latest victim and Gege is running out of characters. And so there is only one solution left for the story. Gojo returning with everyone. Let's go! This will parallel what occurred in the Heian era, showcased in chapter 237, when all the strongest special grade sorcerers gathered together to fight against Sukuna's reign. But history won't repeat itself, as unlike before, Gojo's collectivism up against Sukuna's selfishness will strip away the old era to bring about a new one. One that will allow for Gojo's dream to come true to reset the Jujutsu world for the better. Ah, oh, damn. That deal really got me high on Gopium. I don't <laughs> what am I even saying? <laughs> However, the heroes have hit a point even lower than me, as every character just gets hyped up to rival Gojo and compared to him just to do little damage. Sukuna then cusses out Yuji, and then they die off screen, or just taken out for the next challenger. Kusakabe went from being the narrator to becoming the main character without even realizing it. All sorcerers, including Satoru freaking Gojo, used the glazing cursed technique to hype him up as the best grade one sorcerer. To no one's surprise, Gege wrote this chapter as a parody. However, it's not all a joke, as there is foreshadowing that Kusakabe's stalling time will allow everyone to recover from their injuries in time to return. His stocks keep rising as he begins using simple domain, claiming it will amplify his own cursed energy whilst weakening Sukuna's technique. This also occurred in chapter 246, and that's when Kusakabe declared his resolve to protect their chance at victory even if it kills him. But you see the theme that's going on here, don't you? Everyone is collectively protecting each other against a monster, which is something Gojo had to learn after his death as his perspective on sorcery had to change. Unlike the others who intend to risk their lives to save the world, Gojo's view on the fight with Sukuna was completely different. Rather than thinking about the greater good and the fate of the world, Gojo was having fun, and even admitted it was a shame that Sukuna didn't use full power against him, which Araume recently confirmed. This affirmed Nanami's assessment that they should leave everything to Gojo because he was, in a way, obsessed with Jujutsu. In his own words, Gojo lived for it instead of using it as a tool. One of the reasons that led to Ghetto's downfall was that Gojo couldn't see past his newfound identity as the strongest. After chapter 78, splitting away from Ghetto is what made him have an identity crisis. Hence, all his friends conclude he fights for self-satisfaction just like Sukuna, rather than keeping sorcery going and protecting people. Even in recent chapters, we see in 253 that Sukuna activates Black Flash simply out of the thrill of fighting and facing a new opponent in the form of Maki. This is because he wants to test out the limits of his sorcery. To no one's surprise, Gojo's purpose was just like Sukuna, which led to his complex relationship with the idea of loneliness and love. Because because unlike him, Gojo couldn't shed every emotion and become inhumane. However, by killing his ego like Buddha, Gojo realized that protecting the future just like he intended is much more important. Thinking about it, Gojo's statement that he was glad to die to a stronger opponent stripped him of his identity in the title of the strongest that laid a very heavy burden on him. Going back to the idea that he believes his students will match him one day. With defeat, he can realign his enlightenment. For example, his own beliefs that he preached to his students have been proven wrong. He claimed that when you die, you'll be alone, but Gege made sure that all of his friends who loved him were present, as this is what makes Yuji's purpose from the very beginning make sense, as that is his goal. Hence Gojo's rebirth with a changed sense of self, where he will no longer be the strongest, will complete the full circle of his character development. Breaking free and living like a normal person, no longer isolated by his strength. What's more is that a major hint towards his revival is actually an homage to Hunter Hunter by Gege. As we already know, he's a big fan of the manga and Tagashi, referencing it multiple times, even in the Sukuna vs Gojo fight. But Gojo's death is actually a direct parallel to his Sokas against Krolo, with both of them losing one arm and ending up in an awful state. His Soka managed to resurrect despite all odds. Later we learn that he had ordered his bungee gum to bump his heart and lungs after his death to revive himself, which we already know Gojo had recovered his cursed energy output as well as RCT before the fight against Sukuna ended. Adding that to the fact that his body was taken to Shoko to heal and that he would choose the opposite path as Nanami, it tells us that the agenda is still alive, people. You know what? G come here. Give me some fresh copium, all right? <sighs> oh, yeah. 
After all, even Hisoka said that fighting against someone as strong as Krolo was like a wake-up call to him, which parallels the same feeling Goto expressed after his death. Moreover, the example of sorcerers such as Hikari using binding vows to save themselves while sacrificing a major part of their body also applies in this case. But it doesn't end there. Gojo's I'd win moment is a direct reference to Hunter x Hunter, which Gege confirmed himself. In Hosoka vs Krolo, the Phantom Troop leader says that he will 100% win, but Tagashi claimed in an interview it was his intentions to make sure that he does, as any character that usually says they will win ends up losing. In parallel, Gojo gets asked the same question against Sukuna, but loses to subvert expectations. However, with how the power scaling has been revealed, there is no other option but to bring this man back. Think about it. Kusikabe, who was declared the strongest grade 1 sorcerer, has bored the king, where he doesn't even have to move a muscle to attempt to kill him with his cursed technique. The manga hyped him to have this specialised version of Simple Domain that could expand and has an automatic system where he can take down any incoming attack. He's dealing with Sukuna's slashes by reading the cursed energy sparks, motion and pure intention. On top of this, Gojo even certified how broken Kusikabe's technique is by bringing up the fact that a lot of rookie sorcerers have to create binding vows to use Simple Domain. However, Kusikabe is in such a different league that he can do so without any. And what did it amount to? A couple of slashes that doesn't face Sukuna, which he instantly heals from, and dead. Gege is taking the piss and even gave this guy an honoured one moment just to poke fun out of Gojo's death off screen in the dude in a similar fashion. Shockingly, he doesn't even split in half, despite Sukuna being more than capable of doing so. With how things are going with the power scaling, the community thinks Gege is writing himself into a corner and that only a Deus Ex Machina plot device would be able to make them win, much like what happened with Madara in Naruto. However, there are still three options. One, bring back Gojo with everyone healed like the Avengers. 2. Bring Kenjaku back as it would all be according to his plan to betray Sukuna. Or 3. Sukuna kills everyone and activates the merger just like he said he would. Araume claiming that Sukuna's cursed energy waves don't even match what he did in chapter 237 against elite special grades in the past means he isn't going all out. This is evident in his fight against Yuta, where gambling to tank a maximum output Jacob's ladder worked out in his favour and the duo admit that despite cheating to train their powers to become stronger, it still wasn't enough. He still has the highest reserve of cursed energy matching Yuta confirmed in chapter 250 and the only person second to none to Gojo admits to readers that if it wasn't for Gojo's battle he would have instantly taken them out no diffing all of them. And so as a result we know that the power gap is just way too huge as he's slowly getting his domain expansion and RCT back which raises huge questions in our head. Firstly how the hell did Gojo with his six eyes not sense the spark of the world cleave when it clearly states in this chapter that even a grade one sorcerer like Kusakabe could. He could sense the sparks, but could also see when Sukuna changed his attack from cleave to world slash, meaning that they emanate a different feeling in energy. So like, why didn't Gojo notice this? The man noticed Toji, the man that was undetectable to the whole world. Then there's the fact that the way weaker sorcerers like Kashimo dodged it due to Sukuna warning him, then Maki sensed it and dodged it, and now Kusakabe? Gojo had experienced the reality cutting slash before with Maharaga cutting off his arm, so why would he not be able to detect something that could cause him harm? We're even told that the reality cutting slash requires hand signs and chants. We know Sukuna could whisper them as he did against Maki, but that doesn't explain the hand signs that he would require to do as they are literally blown off by Gojo. This is the same man that could detect someone's cursed technique just by using his eyes. Yet when it came to the very moment of attaining victory, he would rather go on talking than accomplishing his goal? Remember when Gojo claimed he plans to take out Mega his heart, lungs and more to put him in a more deathly state due to how strong Sukuna is, yet he doesn't do that at the one moment that he's given? Huh. That's just lazy writing. The second question I think everyone is thinking in regards to Gege's own statement is that didn't he say he had to kill off Gojo because he was too powerful and would fix all the problems the story would put the characters in, but now he's replaced him with someone like two times stronger? Given the fact that Kusakabe mentioned that Sukuna hasn't even revealed his technique yet, nor the fire that killed Jogo, which they admitted would destroy all of them. Let's not forget that Sukuna thought it was cheating if he revealed his technique since doing so actually boosts your power. That leads me to believe that Gojo returning 
with his students is the only solution against such a monster as it goes back to balancing the world. With Gojo's birth, to circumvent the gap between the sorcerers and curses, the curses got a lot stronger, and it looks like fate will allow for the reverse to occur this time to make them catch up. And speaking of matchups, the editor trolls everyone saying that Miguel stood on equal footing to Gojo. Editor, please play the footage, man. Now that all the sorcerers are in hospital, Gege was running out of characters to kill and realized that he had some strays at the bottom of the barrel, which is why Miguel has joined the fight. This man was in Africa with his family and the one time Gojo asked where he was at, Yuta said that he didn't want to see him. Yet he appeared right now at such a clutch moment, he wasn't even part of the contingency plan discussion meeting. Unless Yuta asked him to join on a possible suicide mission trip to Japan, it's hard to see why Miguel would just willingly jump into this fight. After all, even in the prequel JJK Zero, he was only interested in the money and ran for his life as soon as he could. Also, how the hell did Miguel even enter the culling games? Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. If even the most respected grade one, aka the last hope of humanity, couldn't do jack shit to Sukuna, how are we supposed to believe that this man could? Miguel could actually have some weight in this fight, I suppose, if he found a way to recreate the black rope. If you forgot, the black rope is a cursed object similar to the inverted spear of heaven as they both have the ability to nullify curse techniques. However, Gojo being Gojo had destroyed them both. They even tried going to Africa to get some more to realize that there's none left. But I guess with Gege being Gege, who knows what they might find down the back of the sofa if they're lucky. Furthermore, since anyone is being thrown at Sukuna to stall time, we still have Gakakanji and Panda with an army based on Principal Yaga's cursed corpse technique, or that would yet again be another plot point down the drain, just like whatever Kenjaku going to China in the USA was. However, to enjoy peak fiction, find out how Naruto helped create a new tailed beast in Boruto's time skip. Uh-huh, no, 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 you heard me right.